springtime is certainly upon us. And to embrace the new season, I embarked on a tranquil cycle ride through the peaceful Norfolk countryside. During my travel, I visited many historical churches, big and small, from the free churches of Reetham to the monastic giant of Binham Priory. While listening to the classics of Bob Dylan, I passed the ruins of a long-forgotten church which used to mark the cultural centre of an abandoned medieval village called Pudding Norton. Later, I sat down and watched a buzzard soar around the tower of All Saints Church at Skullthorpe as I ate my packed lunch. I was exploring an area known as the Norfolk Plateau, the countryside which covers from Fakenham, Deerham, Whiton all the way to King's Lynn, where the plateau meets the wash. Here, the area is considerably flat and makes up mostly farmland just like the rest of Norfolk, however notably without the bodies of water that make up the famous Norfolk Broads and the surrounding Fenlands. It is here where I had been told about a very interesting church which was rather unique in its architectural design both inside and out. This eccentric Norfolk church is the works of a Victorian clergyman named Reverend Whitwell Elwyn, who in his lifetime was a personal friend of Charles Darwin, and apparently a descendant of Pocahontas herself. It is named the Church of St Michael the Archangel, and is situated in the small village of Booton, just down the road from the much more well-known town of Reefham. To those who study churches, you may have instantly realised that this is indeed not a medieval church. Instead, it was designed by Elwyn himself in the Victorian period, without the use of an architect. Despite having no formal architectural education, he claimed to have borrowed his inspiration from multiple pre-existing examples of historical architecture, such as the West End Arch, which is said to resemble that of Glastonbury Abbey. And then of course you see the minaret-like steeples, resembling the Middle Eastern style, with an added Gothic flair, as if one were to clash the Hagia Sophia of Istanbul with the Gothic Cathedral of Madrid. St Michael's replaced an earlier church on the site, with this one being built in the mid-1800s. Above the porch on the northern side of the church stands a figure of St George adorned in 1480s to 1490s Gothic plate armour, proudly placed upon a plinth with the head of the slain dragon at his feet. Inside you will note that the nave church is largely left bare as to instantly bring your attention to the 22 life-sized angels which fly high in the rafters of the ceiling. These majestic wonders are the works of master carver James Minns, who also carved the famous bull's head which became the emblem of Coleman's mustard. The church is said to be very naughty, but in the right spirit, as it seemingly disregards most of what contemporary churches included in favour for the grandiose artwork and architecture. Although you couldn't complain about the Reverend's possible religious vanity when it came to the construction of this church, because he raised all the funds himself. One other little claim to fame that Bhutan has is that the famous actor Stephen Fry grew up here for a few years of his childhood, returning some years later to study at the Norfolk College of Arts and Technology, and he evidently had a strong passion for the county as he now lives in Norfolk to this day. I hope you've enjoyed this little venture out into the countryside of Norfolk, and be sure to check out my other videos where I highlight other hidden relics of this beautiful county of Norfolk. But for now, Thanks for watching.